Welcome to Imagine Tonight. The picture on the screen will be giving you a big clue as to what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. this evening. That wonderful story of Aeneas, Jesus uh, appearing to the two disciples on that road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Two disciples who have been traumatized by what has happened a few days before on Good Friday, who are also confused because some of the women have say, said that something has happened, something has shifted, something has changed. Perhaps even they've met him or met angels. They're not believing that. They're confused by it. And Jesus is having a bit of fun with them. Asking them what they're talking about. Are you the only one who doesn't know? What's been happening in Jerusalem these last days? And the joke there, of course, is that He's the only one who does know what has been happening. Anyway, they tell him. They tell him his own story or part of it. Um, after they've told the story and all the grief that's a part of it, um, he's uh, very Jesus with them. Oh, how foolish you are. <laughs> and then he he retells the story from a very different perspective. It includes all of their details, but so much more. The bigger picture. And something is happening to them as they walk. And when they get to where they're going to stay, he makes as if to go on. Will they invite him to stay? Yes, they do. They've enjoyed their time with him. And so he comes in and they share a meal and he takes the bread. And as he breaks the bread, in that moment, they realise this is Jesus. He's been with us all along the road. And he vanishes. And they look back at their walking with him, their talking with him, and realise that their hearts were burning all along the road. There is this a double recognition. But he's in the breaking of the bread, but he was also in the breaking open of the word and the way their hearts came alive again as he talked. And instead of going to Emmaus, they run all the way back to the other disciples, full of joy. It's a, a wonderful story. This image I like because the third figure, Jesus, is transparent. Uh, they didn't recognize him. So there's something mysterious going on. It's not an ordinary presence. Another famous image of the Emmaus story, the Caravaggio. The two disciples, you can see how their bodies are responding to what they are coming slowly to believe. The, the energy that's returning to their limbs. They won't be able to sit still. And something else I notice about this image is that Jesus has really good hair. I would like to know what shampoo he's using. 
You may have seen this one. Velasquez, apologies for pronunciation. You can see one disciple, one and a half disciples and Jesus in the background around the table. And then in the foreground is the servant, African ethnicity, uh, lowly, unnamed, in brackets, unimportant. But she detects that something really significant is happening and she, she turns her head so that she can listen in. Uh, she, she dares to believe that this could be for her too. She's not irrelevant. She's not unimportant. We don't know where Jesus goes after he disappears. I like to imagine he turns up in her kitchen and helps her with the pots. You may notice something about this image that I like. We have Jesus and the two disciples, and you will notice that one of them is female. In the story, we're told that it is Clopas and another disciple. Sometimes when a person is not named, it is because they are female. And Mary, the wife of Clopas, is named elsewhere. So there is a fair old chance that the two disciples are Clopas and Mary, his wife. That might be important for what we're going to do later. And Daniel Burnell adds all this colour to the image of the three walking along the road on pilgrimage between Good Friday and their own experience of Easter. Maybe we're all on that journey. Tonight I'm sending you back to first century Palestine. To the road between Jerusalem and Emmaus a few days after Good Friday. And you are going back as you. As you are right now. You might be distracted or tired, or wishing you were somewhere else or someone else a better human being, you might be quite content and at peace. Just notice how you are in your life at this time and in this moment now. How are you in your body? If you need to change your position, to be kind to your body, then do so. And how are you feeling? How are you emotionally? Good. 
Is there anything on your mind? And how are you in your spirit? Deep down in the core of your being. And however you are, let God look at you with love. And what is it you want in this prayer this evening? Is it to meet Jesus on the road? To share some of his joy? Is there something else you desire? What do you want? Ask God for that. Okay, it's time to hit the road. So without trying too hard, See if you can see in your mind's eye the road between Jerusalem and Emmaus. If you've been to the Holy Land, you might be able to picture something. And even if you've not, and don't force it, and if it doesn't look like it's first century, it's okay. Just take whatever comes. There is a path. And find yourself there on the path, if you are able to, just as you are. And from that perspective, look around, look at the path, 
look at the environment, vegetation. Is it flat? Are the hills? Is it straight or winding? See the sky. And see if you can feel the sun's heat on your face. Do you notice any sounds, any birds or insects, the breeze? Smell the air. And touch something. Uh, the clothes you're wearing or touch the ground. Might be dusty or rocky, or maybe there's grass. And on this road, you are not alone. There is one other person with you at the moment. A first century companion. It might be Clopas, or it might be his wife, Mary, who was at the crucifixion. Which one is it? Are you with a a man? Are you with a woman? And greet each other. And begin to walk. Your companion has recently seen Jesus, the one who they loved, killed in awful circumstances. 
So as you walk, listen to them describe those events. I'm going to give you a minute for them to tell that story. As they talk, what do you notice about their demeanor? How this has affected them? And when it's time, take your turn. You are in the 21st century, in a world where there is war and environmental crises, and your own personal world, and the challenges around you in your life. So take a similar amount of time to describe your world to your companion. And it's okay here to focus on what is difficult, what is hard, what is Good Friday. As the two of you are sharing, Jesus comes and joins you. A third figure, probably incognito. How does that happen? How does this stranger seem to you? 
get a sense of him. And he wants to know what you've been talking about. So let your companion tell their story first. And Jesus wants to hear your story too, so share some of that with him. And while you're talking or after you've shared, let Jesus respond, perhaps to each of you in turn or to both of you. And let him respond in whatever way he wishes, in words or some other way. How does Jesus want to respond? to the two of you and another minute for that. You're reaching the end of this journey, the end of this prayer time. And Jesus makes as if to go on. And you hear your companion ask him to stay, stay the night. And Jesus succeeds. He will do that. Do you have a request for Jesus too? Make it.
before we leave. Is there anything Jesus wants to reveal to you, show you, do? And if you sense that there is more that wants to happen here, you can go back. This can be continued later. And we pray that we might recognize Christ with us along the road. From Good Friday till Easter Sunday. We pray God's blessing on each other and on Chris as he nears the end of his Camino. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.